make like a high throughput screen, right? Just to pull all these structures. And do So we already can use it for the geometries. So the ground state calculations are pretty good. For yes. the few structures you got. Huh? For just few no, structures for which you used before. We using it's pyramid. It, it, I forgot the name of the group. It's Lydia. No, Lydia. Vinci. There was a group. Uh, we met at ACS conference. There is a lady. She is working on applying the same empirics to the ruthenium complexes. Oh, okay. And she was parameterizing the. I think it's PM6 or something like this for ruthenium complexes. And then Levi was taking her parameters for, for ruthenium and kind of tune it to see how it works for iridium. So for, uh, for the ground state calculation, just finding the structures, we have very good results. They provide pretty much similar geometries to really? the regular DFT, and they're about 10 times faster. So you got kind of the same geometries, but uh, what but, about but the energy-wise? For excited state calculations, uh, of course, it was very wrong. Like we having completely different, like new peaks appearing somewhere. Uh, like, very strange. Uh, uh, but now she is published uh, recently. She published a paper where they really applying it to the excited state TDFT calculations. So she did some Mars and Christie. Yeah. So they already parameterized it. So it's not PM six anymore. Mm. It's really kind of new semi-empirical approach. And uh, so device actually kind of, we discussed with him that he probably needs to tune now those parameters to this new excited state uh, semi-empirics and see maybe we- They have the PM, PM7 now, semi-empirical, which is uh, more, much more improved in compared to PM6. She, she was using six, six, six. but, but specifically be. for metal organic complexes. Well, we have this now Gaussian uh, 2016, it has probably PM7 inside. Okay, so uh, not opening on the Oh, screen. it will be on this little screen. On the little I can call for tech support, but it will be a waste of time. But uh, everyone can see this little screen. So there is not much to discuss. Uh, I'm just uh, going to some refresh the information uh, what we discussed last time, right? And uh, then uh, really discuss. Um, Can you refresh, refresh us what is D3 SC? Oh, it's uh, a. <laughs> yeah, there's uh, 3D. It's a 3D data driven uh, development. Development in, uh, in science and chemistry, something like that. Mm. No, it's not a design, data-driven design. It's, oh, uh, okay. it's in chemistry, right? So this, according to the, you know, the the NSF letter, so they wanted to have a few uh, projects which exactly fits to that uh, idea, data-driven science. Using uh, large data, maybe not big data, but kind of large amount of data, and extract some useful scientific information, some kind of mechanism, some kind of uh, uh, properties which can be useful for quick design of new materials. Okay, uh, so that's. Uh, Right, that's how uh, our mm, the main main steps kind of split. But uh, this is what we wanted to discuss last time. Kind of uh, was expecting some intro from several groups, but actually, it's kind of resembles. Uh, Few, few sections of the project. So the computational studies, the synthesis, and uh, chemical informatics, some kind of uh, uh, data generation based on the experimental data and uh, the computational studies. Uh, that's uh, the objects. 
mainly what's uh, going to be yeah. investigated, but mainly it's going to be ruthenium and iridium, right? That's what we put in uh, uh, proposal. So as you can see, there are uh, several uh, applications uh, for these kind of materials. Purposes. So mainly it's for the imaging and for sensing, sensing. Uh, yeah, it, it for different very sensors. Easy. Yeah, because we target uh, on developing organometallics with near infrared emission, yes. so that's for bioimaging application. For bioimaging applications. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, we have uh, another application I think we wrote in the proposal is uh, by using the nonlinear absorption for the eye sensor protection. Mm -hmm. That's another, it's called the optical limiting application. So those are the two, two main applications. The bioimaging, uh, these are sensor uh, Sensor protection. Sensor protection. Yes. Mm -hmm. So these the objects. What I wanted to discuss this time, if you can quickly. Ah, we also included platinum complexes. Ruthenium, iridium. Oh, the, the platinum. platinum. Yes, the platinum yeah. over there as well. Yeah. Yeah. So that's good. I mean, uh, we have some kind of diversity. That's good for these data-driven stuff. So the more diversity you have, the the better to catch some right. kind of, uh, you know, some features which are responsible for each particular Yeah, whether uh, it's a plastic. common feature or, or, you know, because the difference is uh, for platinum is a square planar complex, and uh, the iridium and ruthenium, they are octahedral complex, they are more spheric. Right. Yeah. Uh, so the major difference between ruthenium and iridium is that iridium has uh, a strong ligand field, so their d orbitals are much more uh, deeper. You know, um, it means the d orbital, uh, the highest occupied orbit, d orbital for the iridium complex has lower energy than the ruthenium. Or in other words, simplified for ruthenium complex, their frontier molecular orbital has more contribution from the d orbital of ruthenium. But the iridium complex, depending on the ligand, the d orbital contribution could be much less. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I know in, even in literature and even in the beginning when we start working on this, some reviewer even ask, yeah, there are lots of ruthenium complexes that have been started. The iridium complex should be similar to that. That's not true. So we just actually, this year, we published a paper. We did a direct comparison using exactly same, same site, ligands. yes, of ligand. Because the most commonly reported ruthenium complex, it has a three diene ligand, a three NN ligand. But for iridium co uh, complex, the most commonly or easy to synthesize the one is a, we call it a monocanal ion iridium complex. It has one N -N ligand mm -hmm. and then two C -N -N ligand. So when the ligands oh. are different. Structures maybe? Oh, yeah, sure. If, uh, there is a small whiteboard and oh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay. hopefully we can project it. We can draw them yeah, yeah. That's great. Yeah, that's what we need actually. Mm, Try to understand. We to discuss the yeah the structures yeah. and uh, also uh, what kind of properties we need to extract for each uh, structure. Mm -hmm. What the difference between them? Oh, that's oh, nice. Okay, that's good. So I need to draw it in a better way. We have this. That's the octahedral structure. So you, we basically have nitrogen, nitrogen here. Uh, it's a cross. Okay, let me just give me a second. We also have uh, this. Mm -hmm. 
on this screen if you need some some uh, of the ligands oh. you can get from here okay I, I think i'm fine so here should be a, a, a just joint in the wrong way here is the carbon now it is a nitrogen this is for iridium complex the cn ligand basically me it's uh, the simplest cn ligand will be this Phenopurity, so it's yeah, this yeah. carbon and then nitrogen. This carbon initially a benzene ring, it has a hydrogen, but when it coordinates, this hydrogen is uh, deprotonated, so this carbon actually carries a negative charge. Okay, iridium here is a iridium three, it's a three plus. So in the complex, the carbon here and the carbon here, each of those carries one negative charge. So it balances the charge. Overall, it has nitrogen is coordination bound. Nitrogen uses a lone pair to interact with the vacant orbital on the iridium. So those are called coordination bound. Uh, it does not balance any charge. So it's usually positively charged. Yes, it's monocanonic. ionic. You, it's also commonly we call it. Uh, being cyclic metallated for the CN ligand coordination is called uh, uh, cyclic metallation. Okay, so we have two of the CN ligand and the two nitrogens on the two CN ligand. They need to be crossed. That's the general geometry. But for ruthenium complex, ruthenium is ruthenium two plus. Okay, so here is a three plus, and uh, it has also similar octahedral structure, but it has three NN ligand. NN ligand is two bipurity, okay? So one here is another, it's uh, two bipurity we refer to. So you cannot them. use the same uh, ligands for, for the ruthenium? No, okay, let me explain that. It's very difficult to synthesize ruthenium with these things. Yes. But for, mm. for iridium, you can actually have everything also with bipyridines, right? Yes. Ruthenium, we can use three bipyridine as a ligand, but it's also difficult to synthesize, but we were able to make it. It's very rare. No, but, but for iridium, you yes. can do both either with uh, NC or NN. Uh, yeah, that's ligands. right. Okay, I'm just still draw the general structure. So ruthenium, uh, no. So it's difficult to synthesize that, but uh, as soon as we synthesize, it's quite stable. Yeah, it's stable. stable. Yeah, it's stable. So uh, yeah, ruthenium, that's the common feature, a common coordination pattern with the three uh, diimi ligand. We call it an ligand, we call it a diimi ligand. Uh, I think in re recent years, literature also reported we can uh, it, it can use two diimi ligand plus one CN ligand, so you get a plus one ruthenium. That's possible, but it's rare. Means it's difficult to be synthesized. For iridium complex, uh, the most commonly started one is this mono kind of ionic one. It was used. It has the uh, phosphorescence, means the emission from the triplet excited state. And by varying the structure of the either diimi ligand or the CN ligand, we can adjust the homo lomo level. We can adjust the excited state energy. Therefore, the emission color could be tuned. So the monocanon ionic iridium complex is widely started for OLED application. Okay, there are certain uh, companies already produce the green emitting iridium complex or the uh, right. The blue one iridium complex, that's quite rare because you need to, because for the iridium complex to be able to produce blue light, it need to be, the emission need to be come from the ligand, one of the ligand. Mm, okay. that, that's so difficult to push. It. Yes. So that, that, that's the beauty of the iridium complex because it has a two different type of ligand. When you adjust the diimi ligand, basically we try to adjust the LOMO. When we adjust the CN ligand, we try to adjust the HOMO. Yeah. So for the ruthenium, uh, all three 
and then ligands the same? Could be the same, could be different. You so, can put a certain substituent on one of the, a uh, one or two of the diimines. So do you still go through the chlorine salt, like you do for iridium, or do you not, like where you have the two metal centers connected to chlorine, or is it a different mechanism? It's a different okay. synthetic approach. Uh, what Levi is asking for is how to synthesize this. To synthesize the iridium complex, we need to use the CN ligand to react with the iridium trichloride first. Then it will give us this diiridium bri uh, chlorine bridged dinucleic iridium precursor. Then we use that precursor to react with the diene ligand. Then we break the chlorine bridge that converted into the mononuclear complex. So the majority of of them are all three the same, or you have two the same and then one different? No, the, here, ah, only the two are the, yeah, ruthenium. Ruthenium is a commonly started one would be either all three, that's called a homoleptic complex, if all three ligands for the ruthenium are identical, homoleptic. If they are different, most cases are two the same, the okay. third one is different. Okay, for iridium complex, actually, okay, iridium complex, another commonly started one is this called a trace cyclometallated iridium complex with three CN ligand. That's a neutral complex, okay? Because again here, each of the CN ligand carbon here has a negative charge, so overall it's a neutral complex. The neutral one actually is the most started for the OLED application. Monocanon ionic one, some people use that is for the electron chemical luminescence, uh, CCL or LCC, LECC, mm -hmm. light emitting chemical cells, chemical, chemical cells. Yeah. So, yeah, that's a general feature. Uh, as I said, the iridium complex, either the neutral one, trace circular metal one, or the Beans circular metallated monocanon ionic ones, those are the two types most easy to be synthesized and started. But for ruthenium complex, the most started one is the trace diene one with two plus charge. Okay. Now, I think in the, can we go back to this screen? All right, we can push, push the computer on this. Screen. Oh, push the computer. The PC. PC, yeah. okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, on the first structure, what you see there is a beans, uh, beans terdented ligand. Okay, what I just show you, we just just draw there. It has three bidented ligand. Yeah, here is two terdented means. Terdented means three atoms. One ligand provides three atoms to either coordinate or form organometallic bond. Okay. So the uh, both iridium and uh, ruthenium can form a complex like this. Uh, the ruthenium one actually is still the more uh, well uh, well started one than the iridium because for iridium so, the synthetic part is So returning back when you say in the difference between these complexes in kind of without going to the details in the structure, mm -hmm. uh, the ligands. The, the coordinated bond is stronger with ruthenium rather than with, with iridium, or backward? Uh, or let's see. For the same ligands, let's say, if you can compare. Okay. I actually did not check the bond strength, but I uh, what I'm talking about is the ligand field strength. Oh. Ligand field strength so is... So splitting means they're yes, different levels. Yes, how the metal... Uh, split the uh, ligand field. Uh, and the ligand field is stronger in ruthenium than in the iridium. No, in backward. uh, backwards. Iridium yeah, is stronger, iridium so you is have the stronger yeah, larger splitting yeah, between the two D orbitals. Therefore, if you have a larger pi conjugated diene ligand in the iridium complex, your frontier molecular orbital will have very little contribution from the metal. But for ruthenium complex, it's much stronger. the metal, yes. So and, it has, and it's also ruthenium is more redshifted, right? Yes. Typically. Typically. Because the D orbital is higher, mm -hmm. so the lowest singlet excited state in the ruthenium complex typically is the metal to ligand charge transfer. So it's more redshifted and stronger also. From this point of view, if you're looking for infrared emission, then ruthenium is a better choice than iridium then. Is but the true? thing is, in most cases, ruthenium, the emission quantum yield is... Uh, uh, 
Economia that is uh, smaller than uh, the uh, So it's kind of giving the right range of energies, or more promising range of energies. Not so yeah. strong. But, but no, in no, terms of lifetime and intensity, it's weaker. Yeah. And, and again, because because of the MLCT character, very strong MLCT character problem. That's right. Then if you really, you know, extend the pack conjugation of the ligand, you can really switch the triplet excited state. Because here we talk about two things. Absorption is mainly based on the singlet excited state. Emission is from the triplet excited state. Mm -hmm. So the adjustment of the singlet and triplet Might can be different. completely, yes. Then the triplet, especially when the uh, pi conjugation of the ligand becomes more extended, the triplet excited state can, be, can become the ligand localized pi pi star triplet state. Right. Yes. And you saw it already, right? Yes. In several cases. We, we already saw it in many cases. Uh, and also when the pi conjugation increased, it was interesting. It could be the lowest triplet state is the ligand localized pi pi star state. Mm -hmm. But the emitting state is a higher triplet excited state, G2. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not the T1. It's the but is it bad? Because then you're kind of trapping it. Like if you have anything below, then your emission is not 100%. It's you, you trip in some portion on the slow state anyway, right? Yes, that's right. It certainly can go through from the you know T two to T one. Then T one is non emissive. And you lose so it definitely and if your emission comes from T two, the lifetime will be shorter. Quantum yield will also be reduced. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, we we saw you know in many. It's not a very common, but we saw it. It's not so some that kind rare. of trend. Yeah, we we saw you know many so cases. Looks like we can. Oh, they already know a lot of things about these guys. It's right. just based on the calculation, like uh, looking at the single state and the triple state, we can estimate the uh, energies what we are looking for, right? I mean, you can, uh, and the C is specific. No, specific. We know how to tune it. Yeah. The the challenge is we you know when you actually lower the triplet state emitting state to lower than the energy gap law, the non radiative decay will become much faster. It's exponentially increased. Now it in, in case you, you increase this conjugation lengths on the side on, on the ligand. Mm -hmm. In other way how we can think about it. Um, do we want to increase the spin orbit coupling? I mean, it's typically strong in the systems, right? But probably we can also think about doing the substitution on ligands, mm -hmm. and maybe, maybe not just pure organic ligands, but maybe also think about, like, I don't know, having bromium uh, as uh, additional atoms on the ligands, right? Which it, have it, strong, strong, thing. strong, uh, yeah. which it might really increase, increase uh, spin orbit coupling. And then this problem with dark triplet maybe will be not as bad because it would be what very strong coupled with singlets. We, some of the intermediate complex, it already has a bromo. Actually, it quenches the emission. Uh, <laughs> when the bromine is gone, because you already have a quite a heavy uh, metal, either ruthenium or uranium. Then when you add the even heavier one, the thing is, spin optical coupling, you enhance the S1, T1 interaction. You also enhance the T1 and S0 interaction. So this Which non is that? Yes, that's right. That actually increases the non radiative decay from the T1 to S0. That's not what we want. So then it's, it looks like you really, like again, to think about the strategy, which we probably should go, is more on really thinking about lowing down as much as possible the, tri the, the triplet and also as one state should be bright as well because then we have a hope that they will be coupled. See the emission quantum yield, that one actually is related to how fast your radiative decay, radiative decay rate is also related to the non-radiative mm -hmm. decay. In order to enhance the, uh, the emission quantum yield, either you increase, it's better, best way is increase the radiative decay rate and decrease, meanwhile decrease the non-radiative decay. But if your if, low state is bright, it, if you have a low state triplet state, mm -hmm. which is which is of course not uh, just localized on a metal, right? Mm -hmm. We expect it to be very hybridized with some MLCT, LCT, and so on, some charge transfer character, but a lot of uh, coming from a ligand and pi pi kind of contribution, 
and again, which probably means that my, my understanding is this: if you have S one state which is bright, let's mm -hmm. say if we talk about conjugated polymers, right? They do have the bright state. I mean, the low state is bright. That's why the emission is so good. Uh huh. That's uh, fluorescence. Yeah, but it's sing singlet. Mm -hmm. Now, if they would have, and there are of course some triplet states there, which you usually don't populate at room temperature because the spin orbit is very weak in conjugated That's polymers. That's right. Yeah. Uh, now. In our case, we usually have for ruthenium complexes and even for iridium complexes, usually the low state is not optically active in a singlet. Right. So then, if we have triplet which is coupled with dark state, then it's your, how say, non radiative pathway. Mm -hmm. If triplet is coupled to the bright state and it moving down as much as possible. Maybe S2 right? will be coupled with P1 or T2. It's just not coupled with the dark state. No, this is a good, yeah. But, but the point is that we want probably to move energetic both of singlet and triplet, right? And probably try to make the low singlet state also as bright, not only triplet, because then it probably will provide an increase in uh, triplet emission as well. Yeah, certainly. I think the stronger coupling between S1 and T1, uh, when S1 is bright, right. yeah, it will enhance the emission quantum yield. But on the other hand, we again we usually move in this to the red because it is MLCT. Most will be lower <laughs> because it's MLCT and usually it's not bright. Like yeah. again, we go into the uh, lowest singlet states in absorption, usually not very. Yeah, bright. it's a quite mm -hmm. quite a weak. Yeah. yeah. And if they're bright, they're usually blue shifted. <laughs> so that, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, this certainly is in principle. If we can control this, that will enhance the emission quantum yield. But on the other hand, if we can slow down the non radiative decay from the T1 state, that even we do not really enhance the radiative decay rate, but we slow down the non radiative decay, that actually also increases the emission quantum yield. And to do this, the only way to do this, we either kind of we need to decouple this uh, <laughs> lowest non-radiative states, which are always there, right, from those who are bright, and to decouple it through what kind of uh, effects. Uh, in this case, only if this low state would be really much stronger localized on mm -hmm. some portion of the molecule, and the bright state would be localized or delocalized, but completely on a different part of the molecule then you probably expect that they will be not as coupled, and that's why this non-radiative kind of channel will be not as efficient if you have both states very delocalized over the entire molecule, and then the coupling is very strong between them. So something like that. I mean, again, this, this is, of course, in an experiment you cannot really see mm -hmm. where they're localized, but with computations we probably can see we this, can this factor, mm -hmm. localization of the orbital, and probably the low state, which usually not optically active or very weakly optically active, if they localized on a different part of a molecule comparing to the bright states, this would be probably a good idea to do, or at least to use it as a parameter for hoping that this helps to improve the emission. That's, yeah. I, I mean, another, I mean, empirically, what I mean, photochemistry knows is in order to enhance the radiative decay, uh, uh, try to reduce the distortion of the geometry, that's another method, or make the ligand, the whole molecule more rigid. Mm -hmm. So that, that or, or go to completely symmetric structures. Like if you so use that, that's what I try to see is, I mean, for this being stridented ligand is a ruthenium complex, the geometry is more distorted from the octahedral structure. So ruthenium mm -hmm. one, this is Despite less. The less. Less ah. Oh, this is very interesting. Iridium will be more bright. Iridium complex with this uh, being turned ah, into the okay. ligand. Yeah. So actually, it's less the, 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 how say, the symmetry of the ligands which you use by themselves do not really dictate the actual symmetry of that octahedral structure. And in your case, it's really very important to have nice octahedral oh, structure. Nice. Yes. So yes. Not, less not distortion, more, more rigid. Increase the rigidity and decrease the distortion will enhance the emission. And which bond is longer? Ruthenium? Uh, this one really well, I can answer. Yeah. I, like I did not pay nitrogen, close attention. Nitrogen, ruthenium I, versus iridium. I am nitrogen. Look at the same structure with different metals. I was even trying to you look at... You were not doing ruthenium, so it was Jabba who was doing it? I, he did I, not do the ruthenium. Jebber and uh, uh, Pung. Yeah, and Pung. Pung. Yeah, yeah. Pung did. And even if you had them, you should compare within the same structure with the metal, the only difference. So, like, if 
for the first uh, trips. I just still have a feeling like iridium, whatever nitrogen or iridium carbon bond, probably longer by nature. That that's right. Iridium that's what I it. yeah I prefer. Rather than ruthenium, and again because they're kind of, you you have more flexibility to build not perturbed octahedral structure. Right. If they too too short, not enough space. Space to, to move around. And that's why it's kind of corrugates the molecule, like really. But you could also have that if it's too large. Well. The bond angles are pretty strict. No, no, but but then it would be not stable, right? <laughs> I mean, like you still need to have a very it, good coordination in yes. terms of bond. You really create a bond. But you need an ideal bond length. So you can either be too small and everything has to crunch in, or too large and have it crunch out. No, but my point is because the ideal bond with ruthenium is probably smaller. Sure. It just doesn't have enough space for the molecule to kind of align in the space, so not perturb this octahedral structure. Yes. And you kind of really have to squeeze your uh, benzene rings or uh, bipyridine rings. Yeah. And in the, in, in the iridium, it's probably easy to to push them so without changing the beacons by So I had a question about the topic somewhat before this. When mm -hmm. you were talking about coupling between the singlet and triplets, mm -hmm. technically, we cannot just take the overlap to get the spatial distribution between singlet and triplet. But if you go with like Fermi's golden rule, mm -hmm. if you assume that your spatial locality of your single and triplet are close, shouldn't that have higher coupling than if they're on separate portions of the molecule? This is what we discussed. So just could before. you do like what we did with spin density? Uh huh. And say if this if charge transfer. it's charge transfer or if it's pi pi star, could that be a way to go just from DFT versus having to do T to DFT or Zor corrections or anything else for like a screening process? That part I cannot answer. Selena, do you have an answer for me? Well, this is actually the question which we need to address. Okay. Uh, just based That's on weird. a simplified model, you of course fight. expecting yeah. that if you have not overlapping orbitals in a space, mm -hmm. then when you couple them through the spin orbit or whatever, right, uh, this coupling will be reduced because of the nature of okay. orbitals, right? Uh, because again, when you talk about coupling, don't forget, you write your Hamiltonian, right? And you will have a part in the Hamiltonian of the spin orbit. But technically then this part of the Hamiltonian will be acting on a specific orbital. And couplings we are talking about we are talking about the matrix elements after you already act of your spin orbit on the wave function. Diagonal? Huh? Diagonal? That, Might be not that. Well, well, diagonal because you uh, you find in observables means you find the expectation value, right? Mm -hmm. So wherever you operate and then you have wave functions right and left, wave function. Uh, yeah, that, that, that's generally for, for the emission. For yeah, one, for, from for the triplet inside the state. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's Which, related to the intersystem crossing oh, quantum yield. Yeah, KR is a radiative decay rate okay. constant. KNR is a non radiative. Yeah. But what yeah. I'm trying to say to, to divide mm -hmm. is that we will have the coupling, uh, spin orbit coupling as introduced in a Hamiltonian, right? Let's call it. And then. The couplings we are talking about would be really acting on, let's say, wave function corresponding to the state one, and whatever your it can be triplet, singlet doesn't matter. Now it's coupled, right? Mm -hmm. So which means that again you will have uh, so kind of you you modify already your uh, regular uh, not ground state. It can be excited state wave function, but without without the spin orbit, right? So let's say this is, would be just singlet wave function if you're not having uh, the, uh, the, 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 the spin orbit coupling. But after you're acting your operator on this, you're changing it. And of course, the nature, of, the nature where this orbital is localized will be modified or will be kind of end up with the different values of your coupling independent of this part, right? Just depending on the wave function, you will end up with something big or something small as uh, as observable as uh, actual value for uh, for this matrix element. Make sense? So this is answer to you that you can get very accurate way to introduce your uh, spin orbit couplings. It's one thing which again we usually don't, 
and this is a big question, how accurately you can really make this part of the, of the inclusion, including this, uh, this, uh, this um, spin orbit coupling. I don't know why I call it this, it should be SO. <laughs> okay. and, and the next question is, what is the nature of the orbital which will make your average kind of value large or small? And this completely depends on the, uh, of your low state which you are talking about after, after you are acting and mixing them singlets and triplets. I think that's really useful. That's useful. Yeah, this yeah, discussion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's a for the strategy, how we go. Right, to because do. on the top, I think your phi is really the matrix element, not just the part of the uh, operator itself, right? Yeah. So it's a value. That's right. Which depends <laughs> on you, or, or which which already depends not just on the how you introduce your spin orbit coupling, but really depends on the nature of these orbitals you are acting on. So it's an open question if we can How to calculate highly it. approximate that. Yeah. And again, you can we're, look on them without spin orbit, just looking on single tree blade, right? Then we probably need to calculate with inclusion of some uh, spin orbit couplings in uh, whatever approximations are available to us and kind of come away and get and answer these questions. What would be kind of really really do we really see this difference between single and triplet as we expect? That if, if what we expect that singlet look, like the low singlet dark one localized versus the triplet delocalized, uh, whereas it really provides uh, kind of uh, uncoupled states, or they might not really uh, mm -hmm. might not really so significantly impacting the outcome if you really include the spin orbit couplings accurately, or at least to some degree accuracy. So regarding the structures, those are the, yeah, the three type of structures, iridium, ruthenium, they are both octahedral structure. We can either use the three bidentate ligand, and the bidentate ligand could be diemi ligand or CN ligand. There are, you know, and those ligands, we can do a variety of structure modifications by introducing electron donating or electron withdrawing group, or by extend the pi conjugation. Talking about extending the pi conjugation, we basically, there are two general ways. One way is we can introduce pi conjugated substituent through single bond or triple bond or double bond, okay? Those will impact the, I mean, the excited state properties, you know, in, in actually include, impact everything. I have a question. Usually when you're doing the uh, increase in the pi conjugation, you really usually do it, like with platinum, I remember we were kind of increasing either top or the legs, right. yeah, because they're flat. For the ruthenium or iridium, again, it's usually one ligand is increasing and another is not really changed. So is it because of the steric kind of question or just for better control? Because again, if we're looking for the better symmetry, Right. Maybe it makes sense to increase the conjugation in all directions. We tried that, you remember? The thing is, uh, when we increase the pi conjugation on both the CN ligand and the diemi ligand on the trace bidentate iridium complexes, we basically adjust both the homo and the lomo. Yeah, so <laughs> that, so that, that, that we're we're doing this way? No. This is another way. That's right. by benzoyl right. annulation. What he just yeah. do this there is what is what we were doing. This is what oh, yeah, yeah, we yeah. just were working on the paper with ben, uh, benzene. That, that, that's the benzoyl annulation. That's a different way. I have well, to come to that point. Like, you know. Yeah, here we talk about uh, extend the pi conjugation. Let's see. Oh, we can see it. Yeah, I know. Let me just change. draw a little bit. Okay, for example, that's we extend the pi conjugation. R here could be pi conjugated group. It could be connect here, triple bond, we have the electron, uh, the pi system, for example, here is a fluorine. And the fluorine here, we could have donor acceptor. You know. Oh, and when you, uh, the other thing, you also need, if you want to increase the emission, mm -hmm. we also need probably to increase the dipole, uh, this, uh, you know, kind of uh, push-pull uh, push rule uh, to have the donor acceptor 
health goals, except we, we, the end we donor. We tried that before. I think on the platinum complex, when we introduce a strong electron donating group, we basically quench, completely quench the emission. That's the thing is for the but should it be stage. Simultaneously, you should have a kind of a good donor and good acceptor on both sides. Not just donor or just acceptor. We we tried both donor acceptor. We actually had I remember we had a system on the platinum complex. So we have donor and acceptor. So you had have. a donor and acceptor at the same. No, no, uh, different, uh, uh, different ligand. We can put oh, a donor here, yeah, on the <laughs> Svalana Yuri calls his arm, <laughs> calls his leg. We put a donor on the arm and the acceptor on the leg, or vice versa, a quench, I think, the quench is a mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so... That's what we can play with. Yeah. Anyway, so that, that, that's one way to extend the pi conjugation is by a single or triple or double bond. Here could be, yeah, the triple bond, that could be a single bond connection, or it could be a double bond connection to attach the pi conjugated substituents on the core ligand. And the effect on the diimi ligand and on the CN ligand is different. What we found is when we do this, you know, using this approach, on the diimi ligand, it actually causes the right shift and makes the triplet state longer lived. But when we try to do the similar, even quite similar substituents, the pi conjugated substituents on the CN ligand, it basically, yes, it makes the triplet lowest triplet excited state or shorter lived is because when we just do this on the diimi ligand, the lowest triplet state is this diimi ligand localized pi pi star. But when we also then increase, it makes more of the charge transfer character into the lowest pi pi star state. It becomes a configurationally mixed pi pi star and a charge transfer. Then the lifetime becomes shorter. Yeah. And it's also blue shifting. Instead of red shifting. shifting. I remember there was something. No, some not, people not were saying too much. if you do this, then it's red shifting. No, no, no. That's that's the other way. It come back to the benzoyl annulation ah, approach. Oh, okay, okay. okay. So this part clear to everyone? Uh, at least you have well, it's a little getting, bit It's a huge ligand in this case. Yeah, that's right. Then there is a, another way to extend the pair conjugation. The beauty of this, you can start with a small, mm -hmm. then slightly then increase, you just, slightly increase, and then you can really go that's right. as much as you could. Yeah. So means you you probably we will be probably restricted in really doing very very long conjugated kind right. of things. But, but we probably will see the trend right away. The, huh? the static problems start as soon as you start to increase the ligands. No. They, they are, are the auto side. They will rotate to try to yeah in a periphery in a periphery like they're not periphery. really contribute to the octahedral yeah it's not the, on the the core. only times that it does is if you do benzoannihilation yeah this on is what a I'm specific about. point so not where the I mean, nitrogens this. are mm -hmm. but the carbon next to the nitrogen mm -hmm. and up so on like. If this is the nitrogen, these positions, if you grow this way, mm -hmm. that's the only time it really hinders because it grows towards the ligands. Oh, so if you grow anywhere else, other than that position, it's fine. It's okay. It's okay. So mm -hmm. the benzoyl annulation, that's what just Dimitri drew is, that's another approach to extend the pi conjugation, doing the benzoyl annulation, and more of the, fuse more of the benzene rings on the diimi or the CN ligand. So Dr. Soon, going back to Dimitri's question, where he was saying, why can't you just do it on a lot of places, and you say, you said that at that point, we had both of them, like, grow, Oddly, do you remember? They this? compete to yes. kind of, yeah. So and it's actually quench emission. Uh, quench, yes, that's emission part. Let me see. Okay. Yeah, emission was reduced. But couldn't we use the overlap to selectively tune both the LUMO and LUMO towards each other mm -hmm. if we do it on different ligands? Okay, yes, so you certainly like can. Like if you know play. that. One ligand is really kind of contribute to your luma, and another ligand to your homa, and kind of pushing luma down and homa up. 
can we play with yeah no, we certainly with just different ligands and uh, modifying different ligands to that's to come them closer what we're going to do, if right. we do not change the nature of the lowest triplet excited state yes you want to write a shift to the emission band that's not a problem but the thing is, when it goes to a certain point, then it started to mix the charge transfer with the pipeline start. Then it becomes, you are changing the parentage of the lowest triplet excited state. It's a completely different story. So that's the thing is, yeah, there are certain range you can do it. And there's like three rings about the time where you go from charge transfer to pipeline start? It's hard to tell. Okay. It's hard to tell. Uh, again, it's related to the dynamic ligand, CN ligand, there is a balance. It's how initially the charge transfer and the pipeline star, they are separated. In most cases, pipeline star is the lowest, uh, uh, when the pi contribution so, of the ligand is small. I have kind of a request to you, probably mm -hmm. just because I know in many papers uh, we are kind of cool, so I should, mm -hmm. <laughs> should know them as well as you, but um, maybe could you could you find the most how say representative paper just one or two on each point which you says like oh if we increase conjugation this way mm -hmm. then it's improving there, this. There, there are two papers we dealt with this or two or three papers. One paper is this is as applied material interfaces. Okay. 2013. Mm -hmm. That's the first Respond, one. Respond, right? No, no? two ways work. 13, I think it was 13, I think, uh, I mean, it's a different, oh, Nambi. we probably know that. That was the first paper on the iridium complex. Ah. Yeah. Okay. Then later we have a 2014 paper with, uh, that, that one I think is with Peng, or oh, also Nambi, probably also Nambi. Oh, okay. That one is on doing the benzoyl annulation on the diene mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, Those five complexes, we were able to fix the nature. The nature of the T1 state is still the triplet MLCT. Then when we're doing the benzoyl annulation on the diene ligand, we basically gradually lower the triplet excited state. So we make it shorter lived and less emissive. But relative. Yes, it was right shifted. Then we had another paper is doing the benzoyl annulation on the CN ligand. When the CN ligand, and, but on the other hand, we have to keep a small diene ligand. So we, you know, when we gradually uh, ex extend the high conjugation on the CN ligand, when it's big enough, the triplet state was completely switched to this CN ligand pipeline star state. It changes the nature. That is a different story. So that's what I'm thinking is this one. There, there could be one point. That's why we do this systematic you know, variation, especially the recent three papers. Is benzoyl annulation, I also need to uh, point out, is it's doing the benzoyl annulation not always cause red shift. It could be blue shift depending on the site of the benzoyl annulation. What we found is, you know, for this, Diene ligand, when we do benzoyl annulation at this position, it causes a blue shift. Okay. Benzoyl annulation at that position, we use a different color. This position, that position, or this position, okay, that causes red shift. Benzoyl annulation along the vertical line, you know, like what we are currently doing here, no change. Mm, that's interesting. Yeah, it's the, also has the, on the CN ligand, it less pronounced. For CN ligand, it depending on the benzoyl annulation, whether it's on the diene ligand or on the phenol ring, it will have a different effect. So it means it's somehow anyway connected with the, it is, uh, with the symmetry. Going That's around, right, definitely. As soon as you go on the side. Yeah, what uh, Smolana's group is doing is uh, we consider start from the simplest by purity. And we look at the, because that's the where the Lumo. Then, depending on the symmetry of the benzoyl annulation set, the symmetry of the frontier molecular orbital, basically, that's a Lumo. Then when we do the benzoyl annulation there, we can consider is the interaction of the once rebuilt diene this part. 
either the homo or the lomo of this part interact with the homo or lomo of that part. Then the symmetry, depending on the symmetry, it could be the homo of this one interact. If it's a homo lomo interaction, it basically increases the lomo. If it's a lomo of this interact with the lomo of that, it stables as, as the lomo, it mm -hmm. causes a right shift. Yeah, that one has been, you know, we have two papers published. One paper published, the other one just submitted, is quite consistent. Yeah. For the CN ligand doing the benzoyl annulation on the phenol or on the purity, it will have different effect, but it also has this site selective you know, effect. But can you put these kind of rules uh, like on a separate list? Because you already got these ideas mm -hmm. of what positions shift to what uh, Right, on the diamine ligand, it looks like it's quite, uh, you know, conclusive. We already oh, know okay. it's On that this position, way. this position mm -hmm. is blue shift, this position no change, and this, this, those two are the identical position. This position or that position we call the red shift. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then that part looks like it's quite Mm -hmm. I, I think in the past, what we focus more is on the triplet lifetime, quantum yield, and also the absorption. I need to come back to, to check. That's why I need really need to provide you the information. It's not, uh, I, I really carefully check how that impacts the emission. Because here we look at not just the absorption, also we look at the emission in infrared. So any other questions regarding you know, the, the type of molecules we deal with? So uh, can you please, you, you already mentioned it, but can you summarize once again? So there are two ways to affect uh, position of triplet uh, state mm -hmm. through the extension of conjugation length. One is benzanulation, another is just adding conjuga uh, conjugated groups through uh, sing single, uh, triple single or yeah. triple or double so, bond. So how yeah. they compare which one affects stronger? Or, uh, well, Energetically, you, yes, that's a good question. In order to cause a right or blue shift, it's a benzoyl annulation because benzoyl annulation directly occurs on the core ligand. The, I mean, attaching uh, pi conjugated substituent, it basically, it does not really impact the core ligand. The, the, especially what right now we are doing is the pi conjugated substituents. Those are pi, uh, pi, pi donor, electron donating mm -hmm. group, pi donor. It in, introduced more of the interligand charge transfer character to the triplet mm -hmm. state. That's why it mainly impact the triplet lifetime. It does also, yeah, it does. Yeah. But uh, it does not, dramatically shift the energy of the triplet inside mm -hmm. So you have uh, kind of two degrees of freedom, one to uh, adjust energy and another is adjust lifetime. That's right. We have one system we have not published yet, we try to combine. Mm -hmm. Select the appropriate, the core ligand, not the most right-shifted one, because when it's too much right-shifted, the triplet lifetime gets too lower. Even you add pi conjugated ligand, you can make it a little bit longer lived, but not to the extent we want. So when we select appropriate core ligand, then add this pi conjugated substituents there. We can right shift to the absorption and the emission. Meanwhile, we keep a reasonable lifetime. triplet lifetime. It's a balance. Um, and this is again a good way how we can uh, simulate many different kind of right. Yeah, you, you, and, you, then you, and, do, and then kind of do the combination. Exactly. Right. Combination, exactly. You need to sacrifice something in order to... That's what I need uh, to get from you. I mean, uh, Dr. Sun can kind of give the main ideas what mainly influence on that, then you check the computation with some bigger field, a bigger, bigger field, space. A bigger space, and then based on that, we kind of extract some rules, and based on that, I generate, let's say, thousands of the molecules, keeping in mind these kind of rules. Mm -hmm. 
and then we can kind of virtually screen all of them and pick up the, the ones which we expect are going to be you know the best ones and then we can check them computationally like go back to you and if they Sure, confirm, what yeah, confirm the uh, computation that well, they are really, optimized, uh, yeah. Yeah, they are optimized. Because then we can go back to the, the synthesis and check right, them check. experimentally. Well, what we that already found, Svelana, you remember that was a paper on the platinum complex. We had three, one, two, three repeating the flooring, uh, ethanol flooring group. It's one each. From one to two, it probably caused the right shift, but when it goes to three, it did not. Or even the second one, you know, it's just because the triplet state is defined in the first. It's not part. going to the substitute really so It's just sitting on a kind of around the metal. I mean, Th the that's ligands right. which are coordinated di directly with. Yeah, the it's just the, the the ligand with the triple bond directly connected to the plantain. The, the 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 I think that should be the homo. Homo is just localized. And this part. also explains well very much related to this benzo uh, how benzo annulation. It? Benzo annulation because then then um, it's really pushing it to the bigger. Size of the molecule. I mean, benzo the annulation, it depending, it's still set dependent. So when we continuously add the benzene ring, you know, and then position is still further right shift, and actually it changes the nature. It becomes, this part becomes the both homolomo localized on that part. Hoto loto, yeah, we talk about chiefly the excited states. And, and also, the thing is, uh, Benzo annulation has a certain other limit is when it becomes too big, pi conjugate. Steric, steric effect uh, as well, right? Not just steric, stability becomes a major issue. Photostability. Uh, even the chemical, chemical, stability. chemical stability. Both chemical and but, but this is might be dealing with the steric repulsion. Yeah, it so could like be. You're really breaking again the octahedral core. core. Yeah, we have one system, you remember here we have the here. Then we have a phenol ring on that position. Then it really twisted. It caused a blue shift. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that one really is a steric mm -hmm. effect. But if you continue continuous in any that direction, that's OK. Really see, so it's a yeah, we, we played with many things. Position. That's right. We try to do this one side and try to do it on the other side. And uh, I, I remember when we initially tried to do this, and we were unable to get this most pi conjugated one. I think it's a stability issue. It's almost a graphene quantum dot. <laughs> <laughs> but then it becomes probably too big and too rigid for, for feet to the hydro uh, Even the ligand itself is not stable enough. Oh, it oh even ligands by themselves? Yeah. So, what else? Well, that these kind of ligands should be stable, more or less. No, it, it says, I think uh, there are lots of the it's called aromatic uh, uh, hydrocarbon molecules. It, when the rings goes to six phenol rings fused, it started to become unstable. Well, what about the, the graphene's calendar? Ah. There are so many of them, and it's one of the most stable structures, actually, the, the strongest ones. Yeah, why? why? It, works for them. it become more delocalized. Yeah, it becomes the I, I try to recall it's for graphy. Do you know what is absorption? It's absorption Graphene flakes? Yeah. In the infrared? Infrared, right. Oh, this, uh, how say, near infrared. Mm -hmm. or, or kind of in between. But it is tunable by si uh, but, size. But, and but if you go to bigger sizes, then it's quenched. It's really. Works only as a nano nano structure. Nano structure. Due to okay. very strong confinement. For larger, it goes. Yeah. Uh, as soon as you get into bigger size, red and more, it's more to the red and red and goes to like. And radio. and with with graphene flakes, my understanding is it's still unclear. Uh, are you two talking about the emission or the absorption? Emission, emission, emission. They How do about the absorption? But it's also probably red shifted, right? I mean, if yeah, it's that's easy right. to infrared, that's absorption will be not well, very What powerful. I'm thinking is the stability certainly is related to the homo, homoloma level. Because you can have a very narrow homoloma gap with both quite high or homo and loma. Or you could have like this. What I'm thinking is the unstable one probably is both homoloma level are lower, so it could be either 
easy to be oxidized or reduced. Even by air, mm -hmm. by air should be oxidized. That means so. But this is like even with graphene flakes, the uh, nature of its emission is not really clear. It might be defects and mm -hmm. age effects, where you just making a defect in the conjugated structure, and this makes it emittive. Mm -hmm. Or it really is a nanostructure due to the confinement effect of your completely delocalized uh, pi orbital or something like this being confined in whatever your one nanometer size or something. So, but my understanding is that no one really have a clear Idea evidences or of mm -hmm. either goes this mechanism or that mechanism because in these sizes it's very hard to control the uh, the defects or anything. There might mm -hmm. be some defects due to hydrogen oxide, like I said, like they might be also very easily to oxidize or something, mm -hmm. and you might have just kind of a... Yeah, what you are really looking at is not the original structure. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but, but technically, if you increase the conjugation to the graphene kind of, mm -hmm. then you, you're not really expected to be emitted at all, right? Because graphenes are not emitting. That's, that's a limiting case. Oh, as I said, is it depends on the pack conjugation. The six or the seven membered ring. I mean, when that then probably the energy level is very easy to be the oxidized or reduced. So when you, really you pass that, yeah, mm -hmm. that's right. As I said, if it become highly conjugated, then both your homoloma are so high then stable. Hmm. There was a question I'm confused about, mm -hmm. just how to think in the right way. Uh -huh. So for uh, um, method which is opposite to benzene innovation, this uh, linear extension of conjugated lengths, mm -hmm. which changes lifetime. Mm -hmm. So uh, is it longer chain, longer, time. longer lifetime or opposite? And it is longer radi radiative, longer radiative or non-radiative? Radiative. radiative. But radiation is not very high, right, in this case, intensity. I, I think the no, emission, actually, it was also longer lived. It but really so, so when uh, the charge, the charge density go, goes, goes away on this conjugated tail, it's uh, less opportunity to interact, therefore it... Uh, uh, it doesn't go to the tails. This is exactly the point. Otherwise, we will change the energy. But, but so No, 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 it's, it's the intraligand charge transfer. So triplet for the triplet state. state. Yes, it's a mixture of a pepe star and the intraligand charge transfer. So the the do, yes. do not, from do the not, to the Do center. not interact and therefore combine much longer. Longer tail, longer lifetime. Uh, yes, that's it's what we have, but control. there's still there is a limit. You remember we also have one work we not published. I think it's Jebel there is a calculation. We have one fluorine, two fluorine, and a three fluorine. I, I, I think that one I, I do not recall. The, my uh, okay, my general impression was there was no significant right shift analyst from the energy. So maybe still it's only the first of high substituents really take Important. over. Then the if you like you have a limit if you increase it more it's not really effective. That's not anything. really yeah that's right. Longer chain, longer lifetime. Up to some billion. Up to some billion. Yes. Very good. Yeah. Okay. So Thank any questions you. from the students? <laughs> I think, uh, yeah, well, when we talk about, you know, every month we keep talking about this, they will get some idea. But, but I think because it was so many published already by Wei Feng and we're also doing some computations, so I guess if you just go to the papers and you can focus just on can recent you ones, you will learn more just for the reading the publication this list I provided to you, to the group. Yeah, so to all of us? And yeah. Maybe, maybe create. I sent it to Levi because no, he was asking. Well, let's, let's create a list of every, all participants so that one can send the things group. by by one click. You mean the literature which mm -hmm. you sent? The list of yeah, the list of uh, our papers. publication related papers. Uh, mm -hmm. But not only for the papers, for like uh, announcements and. Uh, oh, just the group for us. Yeah. You uh, mean all of us or who is involved in the project? Who involved in the, in the project? project. I, I certainly, the, the list I gave it to you was that in early this year or it was you after the grant? You gave two times the same list oh, you gave okay. me. Yeah, <laughs> I was asking like last year. Oh, okay. Same this year, this year certainly has a certain update. Yeah. Ah, you, you, you sent it updated one? 
I think yeah, really in June, it, it got to be after this grant you started. After this grant you sent me like uh, in September. Okay. Uh, no, no. You closed. We probably have okay, so Okay, you updated it. Yeah. Yeah. Really so quick. Okay, I rushed them through to try and get back. Yeah. I don't Instead know. Three hours we were doing less than one hour. Wow. That was <laughs> Then, okay, so I don't have anything to discuss yet because from my side I don't have any updates yet since they um, are still working on the database. Actually, it's not I ready. have a question about this literature. Uh, should we, because you, you, you kind of already give us a good good review on the way how different substitution, how we can, how say, split different types of substitutions with conjugation this way or that way, mm -hmm. iridium, iridium versus ruthenium and kind of difference and some similarities. So would it be a good, good idea to try to organize now all these papers to the kind of this kind of ideas papers where we're really addressing this question of showing this type of conjugation is doing this, mm -hmm. this type of conjugation doing that, this type of things for ruthenium or yeah. this is comparing ruthenium versus ruthenium. So kind of really make all the published work already in a more organized way and make it to be in a cluster of some kind of subsections or something. You want to have the first of all separately by each metal, mm. and then separation by metal is very easy because no, it just from the name of from the group, title, right? There's some kind of. But I would friends. say it's more like really on the. I mean. Uh, this is just by title, you don't need to read even the paper, you just say, oh, this is ruthenium, this is iridium, this is, can be done probably automatically mm -hmm. uh, through the keywords or something. Mm -hmm. But the main conclusions which paper is talking about, right, and sometimes if it's in the beginning, sometimes we're not making it very pronounced because we're not sure 100%, like if we just start working on these modifications. But after several publications, we really make it very clear that, yeah, this type of changes really leads to that, that, and that. This is really okay, inside yeah, the paper, and sometimes it's not in the abstracts. Like, you really need to read the paper carefully and kind of figure out what exactly this or that. So, again, like, you would organize it in a way to almost write, like, a review to say... Not just review, but this, organize it in a way how we think was talking today, saying, yes. if we do this, so do we see that lifetime is increasing, but energy is decreasing, or something like that. Right, so benzoinhalation does these specific things on these positions. If you do electron donating, yeah. it does this. So kind of thinking about table, mm -hmm. and you have having the effects on energy, lifetime, intensity of emission, I don't know, whatever other parameters we want. Oliva, so, you have this and list. Kind of Can you do that quickly? Are you read these papers or not yet? Well, some of them. I, I, it's much, it's much about 70 fun. papers. Yeah, so cool. it's a huge number of papers I went already. through to look at the computation methodology. So I split them into like, which functionals they had. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. But I didn't like go through and read the entire what kind thing. of conclusions they got. You did it. Okay. But again, I, I think this probably has to be done more than just by one person. It's too much to go with so one many, person. Right, right, right. And we probably need some expertise from experimental mm -hmm. side right, as well. Right, because yeah. and the person should understand here yeah, quantum chemistry and all that we discussed, this kind of stuff. And I say like kind of the way how you explain it today just really Organize them in a pretty much similar way, but with kind of yeah, I can focus ask for Lisa, each because she is more more or less experienced in this way among the, all the other guys I have. So right who now. is your Risa? Risa is uh, the <laughs> he he is in the music department. No, he was in the gun. It's yours. Oh, okay. It's mine. <laughs> so he graduated from NDSU physics. NDSU physics oh, okay. uh, department. Mm -hmm. well, who was he? Alexander. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, so thanks. Yes, that's what I said. I'm not prepared. <laughs> Thank you much. It was really okay, that's good. That's what we wanted, actually. That's okay, right. That's yeah, good. yeah, yeah. Because to, to get some understanding of what kind of trends we have if we change this, if we change this, and that. Actually, we forced you to give us a lecture. Without preparation. That's the thing is you just look at it so many times. That's my job is to try to organize and try to find out to come the rules. Yeah. The change. You know, the, the idea anyway at the end to get this kind of uh, to fill out this kind of uh, table. So where we have information about the 
the overall the material, right? We have information about the what kind of metal, what kind of ligand, or maybe there are several ligands, and the properties for them. So if we calculated data for the whole the metal, uh, metal organic complex, so we put the information over here, so it's going to be kind of several uh, kind of properties. And then uh, using some cheminformatics methods, I can um, uh, complete separate sites, like say properties for each ligand, for example. Then based on that, I can do all this virtual screening. All right. So I need the, the properties for the whole system and then the properties for each ligand. So you expect that someone will calculate it for you or you expect your students will do it? Uh, I expect that you at least will calculate the whole thing. Because whole some of our papers have calculations of the ligand by themselves, right? I mm -hmm. remember it was a Some of those, yeah. Uh, no, no, no. We were doing so absorption spectra at least for just ligands. Separate ligands? Separate ligands, you yeah. Look at but them. there were a few of them because usually it's very kind of trivial or it was done already by someone and we just refer to the papers. But but this is much easier than the whole thing, so probably yeah. not a big deal to calculate. Yeah, for ligands, it's not going to be a problem at all. You have the, the, the main thing Especially that I'm many of them are repeating. Mm -hmm. So it means we don't need to calculate. Like, if we have, suppose, I don't know how many, 70 times 5 at least, right? 350 complexes so far, or more than this? Oh, more than that. 700? Oh, not that much. <laughs> <laughs> so in between yeah, 300 and 700, it's going to be okay. Around 500 probably complexes. So, but we probably have twice or maybe three times less of uh, ligands because uh, with some, some ligands, yeah, we use and for both the iridium, platinum, yeah. and also yeah. ruthenium. So that's why the, the field of ligands is not no, uh, is as small, of course, mm -hmm. comparing to the entire thing. Mm -hmm. The field of ligands which you use. But we can kind of theoretically generate. We talk about how say main side of ligands, and then if you put uh, the substitution, the main core of the ligand and then well, again, this is we need to define attached. with our language probably, because <laughs> this is what took me also some time to to, to, to remember. Like I was saying, uh, you saying, oh, it's a interligand transition. I'm saying, no, it's just pi pi transition because it's one ligand. And, and we think, say, no, it's two ligands, like, it's, yeah, like, they this is what we call them. arms, right? So the central part, the core, uh, the which core. is coordinated, is a ligand. And then the, Pre the substitution ligand. to it is supposed to be a different ligand. Oh, it's a uh, it's still the same ligand, we call it intraligand charge transfer. Or oh, whatever. Yeah, it's actually still pipe star transition in nature. It's just from one part yeah. of the ligand to but the other. But my point is, we also need to be careful what, what we call exactly the ligand. Because with this modification, we might really use in different. Yeah, uh, then we have I'll to say, kind think of discuss about and put things. this kind of abbreviation in between us to understand, right? Yeah, when we really talk about ligand to ligand charge transfer, means is from one ligand to the other. Coordinated ligand, ligand to the from coordinate ligand yes, which is coordinated with the radium to another ligand coordinated with the radium, mm -hmm. and intraligand it means. It's the same ligand, part a different part of, of the, the same one ligand, ligand yeah, which is coordinated. There are, uh, kind of several interesting uh, features. features. Yeah, small right. things, yes. So, so, so yeah. are your, like your property one, whatever, are those for the entire system or for the ligand? No, for the entire system, it's over here. And then the ones between that and the ones for each ligand? For each ligand, for example, that's a property for a separate ligand. Yeah. So for if you have two different types of ligands coordinated to the same <coughs> metal, you would have... You then would have it's going to be here, the second one. From that's the first ligand, from that's the first ligand, that's the second ligand over so, here. But you have like two CN ligands and one NN ligand, so you would have three ligands that you're going to characterize. But if CN right. is the same, if it's yeah, the same, then it would be two. Right. Yes, but it might have slightly different if you do not use symmetry in the calculations. If it's isolated ligand, it would be the same, right? Okay. It changes its symmetry only due to the interaction with the radium. Yes, or except the if the NN ligand is not symmetric. So 
in the paper yeah, that we so just did. So far, we are using, oh, there are a few systems we are really using asymmetrical. We call it mono substitute. Mm -hmm. Only one purity ring is have the substitute. Which then you have to characterize all three. No, in that case, it's oh, still just it maybe, I think no, seeing it in our students. I don't know, but oh, maybe it's it so sounds useful. Uh, you need you probably to make like this isolated zero. ligands. You probably would we be had to look at separated both. into the, the core ligands, had, which are coordinated. And then the that, ligands, when we start substituting, that was different compared like what we think you're saying, like, for example, conjugation, short, longer, longer, longer. So it looks like you need probably to split it into the core ligands, which are coordinated, and it's they, they would be really smaller number of such guys. And then with modification on a, a substituting groups. In right. Right. You can call it like a x means, for example. Oh, okay. A right. x, for example, the core is a, and x is know. kind of yeah, yeah, replaceable. Yeah, like that. The ligand, yeah. but that's and then you will have kind of a, some uh, some kind of space for your a ligands, and then x substituting right. one, and then you put them together, and it would be your kind of you. You probably need to include kind of to separate it, not just just ligands, and then whatever yeah, our changes make you a different ligand. It probably should be substituting groups. Let's call them X and core ligands. Let's call them A, and then whatever the <coughs> possible combination between A and X. Yeah, we can add like one more. Uh, and then po all possible combinations here. between A, X, and metals. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's well, right. Yeah, let me put it actually. That's right. Okay. That's because of the primary group induces it uh, yeah, structurally. The same oh. So the quinoline group here induces a change. This oh, because this, that, yes, that because you have change. not symmetric mm -hmm. this yes. yeah. mm -hmm. So database wise, would it be more rigorous to compute? everything for each ligand instead of having to go back so like if you didn't realize this and you just computed for one lig like the two ligands the cn ligand and the nn ligand no no this was saying like you pro he needs to put additional okay separate thing let's say core ligands right and then ligands with which you use for substitution and then wherever like once then you put them together it would be ax ligand okay and then we can avoid this problem what you say, right? Because it depends how you add this. So those are still different. What you are talking about is a core ligand is still symmetrically substituted. He is talking about if the core ligand is asymmetric, then the C ligand, even the ligand itself. No, no, but they will the be different only due to the when they are interacting on a region. Right. By the, like if you if you just look on just ligands by ligand themselves, by they will itself, be the same. They yeah, it's right. it's only due to the interaction, and then of course how yeah, you so touch it. Is, like the dihedral is less than like uh, eight. Yeah, this will degree. go to this other column where he's okay. having the whole system. I just wanted to make sure that we wouldn't have to go back. And we probably we, we, stuff. Will, we probably will have to do it anyway. At some point, something will be missed, and we have to redo or something like this. Yeah. Okay, so. Oh, I have Are seen this video. You have seen? Dots, dots, dots. Yeah, so these are uh, just helps schematic to uh, Yeah, I kind of repeating everything. So. For educational purposes. Right, right, right. right, right. And you're several times repeating the same stuff. It's kind of uh, easier to memorize, right? To understand something. So these two sides going to be some experimental data from one side, from group of uh, Dr. Sun and uh, the modeling stuff from Dr. Killing and Dr. Killing's group, right? So, and then we will put together this kind of thing to find some 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 trends. It's kind of the regular strategy for this kind of works. No feedback loop? Oh, feedback loop is there, but <laughs> I put it somewhere earlier, right? I don't know. I, I think okay, so it's here. Okay. Yep. So this kind of. There are going to be 
some small loop over here, actually, right? Since when we did some modeling, got some kind of uh, data, then uh, giving you these ideas back, so you're trying to, to calculate them and see is that improving or not computationally and then uh, you're sending it back so based on these uh, new improved ideas we are trying to do the, the, the virtual screening and then goes to see that. actually there should be something like that like a connection between virtual screening and computational chemistry and only after that the synthesis so when you kind of prove it computationally and then uh, send it to synthesis And then it goes to the, the best candidate. Yeah, we have to think about that. I mean, how this loop can be modified. What is the best way to work? So it's actually going to be useful for some future steps or for some other uh, similar works but different compounds, different <coughs> systems. Because still kind of no one uh, was able to offer really ideal way to design this, even metal organic systems, to design them, not like one by one, but to do like virtual screening for uh, thousands or millions or different uh, hypothetical systems and then kind of picking out the best ones. Mm -hmm. Still no one was able to do that. And we just discussed, we have a meeting, uh, so-called the Center for Bioplastics today. And just discussed with other guys that for the polymers also, no one was able to uh, offer the mechanism how to do the like drug design, but for the polymers. So this ain't problem. There are no QSR for polymers, like well working QSR for polymers available yet. If for a project this size, how many papers would come out of something like this? You mean uh, regarding this particular project? Yeah, yeah, like. The size it depends on the um, success, so it can be uh, like few papers, three, five papers, it can be 15, 20 papers, so oh. it depends on the success within these three years. Yeah. So we'll see, it's always kind of challenge. It's always challenge. We put uh, uh, from the reviewers' point of view, because as soon as we're submitting these kind of proposals, some reviewers kind of giving us feedbacks, and almost all of them say it's pretty ambitious, the proposal, the pro pretty ambitious project. Uh, they don't know how successful it's going to be. So they, they told directly. Uh, yeah, it's a high risk, uh, high, high, risk uh, high risk project. Mm -hmm. okay. But they wanted us to try, so that's why they kind of funded it. Mm -hmm. They wanted us to try, so we'll see. <coughs> so even I have no idea is that going to be successful or not. Because that's new for me. These kind of systems and this kind of loop idea. Let's see. But we have to try, because as soon as we uh, be able to make it work, we can apply the same idea for different systems. Mm -hmm. We will be really uh, more or less sure it's going to work this way. Yeah. Okay, thanks everybody for, for discussion, huh? Yeah, next month. December. December. December, but uh, when one cannot. But you will leave in when? Uh, December 3rd. Oh, so we're coming back. Uh, yeah, January. so the whole December. And then I'll probably, in the middle of December also, uh, well, uh, we're going to be traveling. If, if we need a meeting, uh, yeah, this technology give, gives uh, online connection, if, if we need. 
so we can uh, anyone with internet access can but use the, uh, um we we need to decide probably the topic for the discussion like what we are expecting to meet for right i what is expect the something from the computational point of view if you can present something at least one work which you completed and to show completed. steps what you, yeah well, for like example work which is published is completed right mean completed? The, 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 what you published <laughs> Give us an idea how you do the calculations, what kind of uh, so challenges you mean. More the back end, what you do, instead of here's our results. So you expect methodology or analysis of results? The methodology from your side. Yeah. Oh, so you want us just kind of review how methodology. we calculated, let's say, yeah. how we calculated the VM, yeah, at least to start, how we calculated uh, light, you know, Right. Are we using uh, different, uh, like something what you were trying to do with yeah, figuring out which functionals we are okay. using and how they are different? Yeah, it, just for the next, for the December the same functions do not work for different methods. Starting from January, I'm pretty sure we will have some structures already ready for you guys to give and start the, more, the calculations. So then what time if you want to meet in December? In December. So we're also leaving just after so semester. So uh, up to... At least December 10, I'm going to be here, so we can meet somewhere up to December 10, physically here and send, for example, to uh, Ren Fang uh, the link, so she can uh, virtually be with us. Or, or it's going to be any day of December, but then I'm going to be virtually. Uh, so Tuesdays are 4th and 11th. Tuesday of the dead week, that week would be 10 minus 7, 3. Actually, December Four. 7. <laughs> so, uh, December 4? So that would be two, the first Tuesday of December? December 4? Okay. For now at least. Then we can... I'm good. I'm good, yeah, we can discuss. Because it's actually soon, you don't really need to know the... Functions. <laughs> no, not really. I will be okay. in the book. So. But you can send... Yeah, because based on that, I may get so some other ideas right. how I can... Mm -hmm. uh, they have to be. Be involved. Uh, how you can do you have anyone from this uh, chem informatics point of view? Thank you. Uh, Announcing completion of the meeting. Yeah. 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 Adjourn. Okay. okay. Yeah. If he wants to. So uh, meeting is complete. It would be useful if he's. Thanks for joining. Thank you. Thank you. So I.